Hi guys, let me ask you a question. Do you use ND filters when you're shooting videos? In the previous video, I talked about how to use them on your drone. Still, I receive a lot of comments from people who are confused and want to know how to use ND filters to make their video feel more cinematic. I will explain in this video. Before talking about ND filters, we need to understand manual exposure. Why do we need manual exposure? First, automatic exposure adjusts the exposure time while filming. This caused the video to flicker with how bright or dark your scene is. Let's watch this video. When the drone is filming from bottom to top, the video will change from bright to dark. This is a situation that we don't want to see during our editing. It's difficult to repair it in later stages. Whether you use a drone or camera or smartphone, if you use automatic exposure, you will encounter this problem. Second, Automatic exposure doesn't have a cinematic feel. What do we mean when saying cinematic feel? In addition to shooting angle, composition, and color, an important element is called motion blur. There are two clips here. When we pose, one picture is clear and one picture is blurred. If you carefully observe movie shots and hit pose, the moving object must be blurred, not clear. This is called motion blur. Motion blur is an important part of making films. When recruiting, many film post-production companies looking for candidates that understand what motion blur is. Why does automatic exposure have varying motion blur? Generally, automatic exposure will adjust shutter speed to get that camera think is the correct exposure. And normally, bright frame will cause the shutter to open and close very quickly, causing your video to stutter. Also, going from bright to a dark frame will cause an unstable exposure that simply makes it look weird. In other words, that's why your video might not have a cinematic feel and why you should learn your camera exposure and shutter settings. There is a formula here. I have repeated it in my many previous videos. If you want to get a more suitable motion blur, after you decide to shoot a video at a certain frame rate, the shutter speed needs to be doubled of the frame rate or the shutter angle of 180 degrees. For example, when shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be set to 148. If there's no 148 option on your device, choose the closest one, such as 150. If you shoot 60 frames per second, what's your shutter speed? Tell me loudly. Yes, you got it. It's 1 120. Okay, so after understanding motion blur, we return to topic of ND filters. Why do we use ND filters? To avoid being overexposed while keeping the cinematic look we are talking about. In most cameras, using the manual exposure mode and adjusting shutter speed outdoor, using the method I explained earlier, will almost always be way too bright. That's when the ND filters comes in. Think of it as a pair of sunglasses for your lens that allows you one last adjustment after getting the right feel for your shot. So how to choose the ND filters? For people who fly in drones, if you're using DJI products, basically an ND16 filter is enough for you to use the most of the time. But for example, at the sunrise and sunset, the ND16 will be too dark you need to buy ND4 or ND8. For DJI Pocket users, using ND32 during the day is basically good enough for most sense. As for DSLR mirrorless camera users, I would recommend you buy two. One is 2 to 32 and the other is 2 to 400. This variable ND filters will make you save a lot of money and it will be much more convenient to carry. So, you might also have a question since ND16 or ND32 can handle most of your scene. Why do we need ND64 or ND400 and another darker filters? Let's take a look at these long exposure photos. At this time, ND16 or 32 can't meet your needs because the shutter speed is no longer double the frame rate. For this long exposure, if you use a normal filter such as ND16 or ND32, your final image will still be overexposed even in a dark environment. So you need to use darker filters to achieve these long exposure effects. Let's look at this time-lapse video.
I used DJI Pocket 2 to shoot. It's on the highway during the night. Time-lapse photography is different from video. We use time-lapse photography that stuck all the time-lapse photos together in the software to make it into a video. Then, if you want to shoot this kind of time-lapse video with light truck effects, we need to do long exposure processing for each photo. I set the shot 6 seconds. If you use ND16, when the shutter is open for 6 seconds, your picture will be very bright. But when you switch to ND64, your exposure and final imaging effects will be what you want. And all of this content doesn't have an absolute number of sample as a formula to give you. You need to keep trying before shooting, such as the video after adjusting the manual exposure settings, how dark of the ND filters will look better, or time-lapse video at night, change a different filter to take a single photo to see if it's the effects you need, and then officially shoot after you are satisfied. Here we go. Here are some tips on how to use ND filters. I hope you can keep trying so that you can get a better idea on how to use your filters. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.